On behalf of the Texas Lottery Commission, Charitable Bingo Operations Division, welcome to the Bingo Training. This training consists of six modules. These modules are directed to the Bingo Chairperson and the Unit Designated Agent. Everyone involved in Bingo Operations is encouraged to take this training. Throughout the training we will be using abbreviations like BEA for Bingo Enabling Act, Rule for Charitable Bingo Administrative Rule, BSP for Bingo Services Portal, and Commission for the Texas Lottery Commission Charitable Bingo Operations Division. Now let's take a look at the fourth module, Accounting. In this module, we will discuss Accounting. The bookkeeper keeps financial records for an organization or unit members conducting bingo. They prepare the financial records for the information which is reported on the bingo quarterly reports. The bookkeeper is ultimately responsible for the preparation of any financial records for information reported on the quarterly report and for preparation and maintenance of bingo inventory records for a conductor. The bookkeeper must be listed on the organization license to conduct bingo application and listed on the registry of approved bingo workers. When the bookkeeper is approved on the conductor application and listed on the registry of approved bingo workers, they may view the conductor's bingo information and complete the quarterly reports on the BSP. The bingo quarterly report captures the game attendance, gross receipts, prizes awarded, rental income if the organization is a conductor lessor, expenses, charitable distributions, prize fees withheld and due to the commission, and the bingo bank account balances for each three-month period. Figures reported on the quarterly report are used to calculate operating capital, validate that each organization submitted the correct amount of prize fees, show net proceeds, and calculate the minimum charitable distribution requirement for the next quarter. The Commission mails the quarterly report form to all active organizations and units approximately 30 days before its due date to the organization's address of record. Each quarter, we find organizations who move without notifying the Commission of a change in mailing address in a timely manner, which results in the organizations not receiving the quarterly report form. Not receiving the quarterly report form from the Commission is not a valid excuse for filing late, as each licensee or unit is responsible for filing the quarterly report timely. Please ensure that the organization's mailing address is kept current, therefore avoiding potential penalties for late filing. When an organization places their license in administrative hold, they have notified the Commission that they are no longer conducting bingo but wish to maintain their license for future use. Therefore, the license in administrative hold is considered active but not in use. Organizations with their license in administrative hold must continue to file their quarterly report and submit all applicable returns and remittances by the due date each and every quarter, even if the organization did not conduct any bingo occasions during the quarter. As mentioned, the quarterly report covers a three-month period, which corresponds with the calendar year. The first month of the first quarter is January, and the last month of the fourth quarter is December. Quarterly reports, supplements, and payments need to be submitted on a date occurring on a Saturday, Sunday, or legal holiday will be due the next business day. The report will be deemed filed when deposited with the United States Postal Service or Private Mail Service. Postage or delivery charges paid and the postmark or shipping date indicated on an envelope is the date of filing. For quarterly reports and supplements submitted electronically, the report will be deemed filed as of the date and time sent from the specified email address. The actual report and payment are not required to be at the Commission on the 25th day after the quarter, rather the postmark date on the mailing envelope must be on or before that date to be considered filed timely. When filing the quarterly report, round the figures and use the whole dollar amounts in the appropriate fields. If the organization conducted bingo during the quarter, 
the gross receipts, and prizes awarded cannot total zero. All line items should be completed. Even if a line item is not applicable, please enter zero into the data field. Write legibly and double check the entries. Filing by mail is not the only way to submit your quarterly report. The quarterly report can be filed and prize fees can be paid via the BSP. The BSP can be accessed through the Bingo website or directly at bsc.txbingo.org. The interactive version of the quarterly report form is available on the Bingo website and can be accessed from the menu list by clicking on Forms. The form can also be filed via email, however, the payment must be mailed and postmarked by the due date. A distinct advantage of filing the quarterly report and paying prize fees via the BSP is that there will be no postage fees, need to buy any postage supplies, or possibly miss the postmark date and be considered late for filing. Another advantage is that the BSP automatically calculates the formulas populated on the report, and this can help avoid any calculation errors. Filing through the BSP ensures that the quarterly report will be filed in a timely manner. This shows the login screen of the BSP and an example of what the quarterly report will look like when you log in and prepare the file. This is an example of the Bingo Quarterly Report, available on our website. When submitting a quarterly report, sign the bottom of the second page. The person signing the report is declaring that the information is true and correct. The person signing the report must promptly provide a copy of the quarterly report to an officer or director upon his or her request. Keep a copy of the quarterly report for the organization records. There are several disadvantages to filing a quarterly report and paying prize fees via mail. The organization will have to pay postage fees, buy postage supplies, and possibly miss the postmark date and be considered late in filing. There could be miscalculations resulting in errors. Filing through the BSP ensures that the quarterly report will be filed in an accurate and timely manner. Collect 5% prize fee on all cash and merchandise prizes awarded over $5. Report all prizes on the quarterly report. 0 0.01 cents to $50. Over $50. Additional line will report 0.01 cents to $5 that is included in the above. Organizations are legally obligated not to collect prize fees on awards of $5 and under. Only pay prize fees on prizes of $5.01 and, and greater. Ensure that the check is signed. If the check requires two signatures, make sure it has both signatures. Make sure the numeric amount matches the written dollar amount on the check. And make sure the dollar amount on the check matches the total amount due on the quarterly report. Send only one check per quarterly report. All checks must be made payable to the state comptroller. If submitting an amended quarterly report via mail, email, or fax, write amended on the quarterly report. If the Commission identifies a quarterly report that requires an adjustment, the Commission will notify the organization. If the organization agrees with the adjustment, the quarterly report process is complete. If the organization does not agree with the adjustment, the organization must submit an amended quarterly report. If there is change to the prize fees due or penalties are incurred, the organization should contact the Commission. If a natural disaster occurs and the organization is unable to submit the quarterly report to the Commission by the due date, an extension request must be timely filed. The director may grant an extension of up to 90 days to file the quarterly report or pay prize fees. To be considered for an extension due to natural disaster, the county must be recognized by the Office of the Governor or Comptroller of Public Accounts. 
The director may also grant an extension of up to 30 days for filing the quarterly report for reasons other than a natural disaster. 90% of the prize fees must be received by the commission, postmarked on or before the due date of the report. The late filing schedule for a quarterly report is as follows. First day after due date, 5% penalty imposed. First billing statement, 8 days after due date, estimated billings. Second billing statement, 21 days after first billing. Jeopardy penalty date, 29 days after due date, 10%. Additional bond will be required. Third penalty imposed, 31 days after due date, 5%. 61 days after the due date, interest on all prize fees due and any penalties will begin accruing according to the interest rate set by the State Comptroller's Office. Any payment made with non-sufficient funds will be treated as if the payment was not received. A letter will be sent to the organization notifying them of the returned payment with an enclosed current billing statement. The organization must submit a payment for the total liability to resolve the issue. The rule states that if the licensee has failed to timely pay the prize fee due three times within four consecutive quarters and a final jeopardy determination has been made by the commission for three of the four consecutive quarters, the license will be denied or revoked. Additionally, the commission has the regulatory authority to impose an administrative penalty for late payment. The director, for good cause shown, may waive a penalty if the licensee exercised reasonable diligence to comply with the BEA and the rules. To be considered, a written request stating the reasons penalty should be waived must be sent to the Commission within 14 days of the date the quarterly report and prize fees and rental taxes were due. The Commission will inform the licensee in writing within three days if the penalty waiver is granted. The licensee must be current in the filing of all reports. The licensee must be current in the payment of all taxes or prize fees due for the last eight consecutive quarters. If a licensee has had a penalty waived within the last eight consecutive quarters, the current request will be denied. Reporting requirements for the Charitable Distributions Detail Form are different for conductors who are not unit members. For conductors who are not part of a unit, the distributions detail must match the quarterly report total for charitable distributions. For amounts identified for future use, keep detailed records with the information as shown on the form, date, name of a recipient, and check number. Keep these records with the supporting documentation for the distributions for four years. For unit members, the total distributions must include all distributions made during the quarter, regardless of when the funds were received from the unit. The report should include all amounts received from the unit as part of the current amount charitable, or future amount charitable, or combination of the two. When funds originally identified as future use are dispersed, they will be reported on the form. Remember, regardless if the organizations are a unit member or not. These records will be requested as part of an audit. A licensed authorized organization which has been granted federal 501c tax exempt status must use net proceeds from bingo for the charitable distribution purposes that are consistent with their 501c exemption or charitable purposes of the organization only if directed to a cause, deed, or activity that is consistent with the purposes and objectives for which the organization qualifies as an authorized organization under the BEA. All charitable distributions from Bingo must be spent in Texas. All records and supporting documentation must be kept for four years. The charitable distribution is calculated using the formula. Bingo funds balance reported on the quarterly report. Less the operating capital reported. Less the prize fees due. Equals the charitable distribution required. If the net proceeds are less than the charitable distribution amount, the net proceeds become the charitable distribution amount due.
If net proceeds are negative for the license period, the licensed organization must complete the application for waiver form. Unit bingo organizations must complete the application for waiver unit or trust form. These forms are available on the bingo website at www.txbingo.org. Contact Accounting Services for additional assistance with this process. The operating capital limit is the maximum amount of funds that may be retained in the bingo account of a licensed organization or unit that will be used to cover bingo expenses. It is based on the average expenses per quarter. This amount is applicable through the end of the quarter of the license period start date, when it will again be recalculated. For non-unit members, the new calculation will be based on the average expenses reported on the four quarterly reports for the quarters immediately preceding the quarter of the license period start date. Once a new operating capital limit is calculated, a letter reflecting this new amount and the time period it will be applicable will be mailed to the organization. The operating capital limit is the basis for determining how much charitable distribution an organization or unit must make. An organization may keep up to the amount of their operating capital limit in the bingo account. Everything above this operating capital amount must be dispersed by the next calendar quarter for the charitable purpose of the organization. Bingo account funds may be transferred between the bingo checking account, savings account, and petty cash. However, the amounts all count toward the operating capital limit. The organization's bingo account balance on the last day of each calendar quarter may not exceed the total of the organization's retained operating capital limit, the prize fees held in the bingo account to be paid to the commission when the organization files the quarterly report due by the 25th day of the following month, and the net proceeds from the conduct of bingo for the current quarter. Under the statute, the operating capital limit for an organization or unit may be increased under three circumstances. The organization is in the first year of original licensing. The organization experienced circumstances beyond the control of the organization, including acts of nature, that make an increase necessary. Increasing the operating capital will further a credible business plan for the conduct of bingo or for the organization's existing or planned charitable purposes. If your organization needs money in the bingo bank account, funds from another source may be transferred into the bingo account. The transferred amount into the bingo account must be initially reported using the transfer of funds to bingo account form and on the quarterly report for the quarter in which the transfer was made. The form must be submitted to the Commission within 14 calendar days of the date the funds were transferred. Funds transferred to the bingo bank account may be used for authorized bingo expenses but will not be used to determine if the organization's bingo operation resulted in net proceeds over its license period. Funds transferred to the bingo bank account or unit bingo bank account from a licensed authorized organization's general fund or other account may not be dispersed to the organization as net proceeds from the conduct of bingo. Records must be maintained to substantiate the transfer of funds into the bingo bank account or unit bingo bank account as applicable, and the use of those funds for the required record retention. The amount of funds transferred to the bingo bank account must be documented on the quarterly report for the quarter in which the funds were transferred. All or part of the transferred funds may be transferred out of the bingo account. If the organization repays the funds, the amount of the transferred funds reimbursed from the bingo account must be documented on the quarterly report for the quarter in which the funds were reimbursed. Jeopardy determination occurs when prize fees are not paid by 29 days after the quarterly report due date. When jeopardy determination takes place, the organization's security amount may be calculated at three times its highest quarterly prize fee for the four most recent quarters, or for the highest quarter filed, if less than four. For an organization in a unit with a designated agent, 
that has a final jeopardy determination. The financial obligation for the security shall be divided equally among the number of organizations in the unit. Any organization who joins this unit in the future will then be required to post a bond. For a unit trustee organization that has a final jeopardy determination, the financial obligation for the security is the responsibility of the trustee organization. The holder of a regular license to conduct bingo is required to secure the payment of the tax on prizes by providing a security or bond to the commission. A licensed authorized organization must maintain the security until the organization ceases to conduct bingo and the license is relinquished or revoked. If a licensed organization has fully paid all prize fees and associated penalties, if any, prior to a jeopardy determination becoming final for eight consecutive quarters, will have their required security reduced to $100. Be aware of third-party vendors that have nothing to do with the commission. You may receive a notice that your State of Texas Bingo Security Bond is coming due for renewal. These third-party vendors have no official capacity with the State of Texas or the commission. The organization will receive a notice from the commission on commission letterhead with renewals, reductions, or with a jeopardy determination. Show compliance letters are the first step when the legal administrative process is started against a licensee. The commission will send a show compliance letter to licensed organizations for situations where the organization is considered not to be in regulatory compliance with the bingo statutes. Situations when a show compliance letter would be sent are for failure to meet charitable distribution requirements, post a bond or security, pay prize fees, file quarterly and supplemental documents, have positive net proceeds from bingo operations, be in compliance with operating capital limit, file the transfer of funds form, and address any quarterly report issues. The alleged violations are laid out in a letter and the licensee is informed that administrative disciplinary action will be taken against the organization if the organization fails to address the issues. An organization must pay distributors for bingo equipment and supplies within 30 days of taking delivery. If the organization fails to pay, the distributor has an obligation to notify the commission of the late payment. The delinquent purchaser list is a list of organizations that have failed to pay the distributor for bingo equipment or supplies within 30 days of the delivery. Organizations and units are removed from the delinquent purchaser list once the distributor informs the commission that the liability has been paid. The delinquent purchaser list is maintained on the bingo website and can be accessed through the statewide reports and the BSP. Once on the list, the distributor may only sell bingo equipment and supplies to an organization or unit on a payment upon delivery basis. The payment should be in the form of a check from the bingo bank account. If a member of the unit is on the delinquent purchaser list prior to joining the unit, the unit is considered delinquent. If one member of the unit is on the delinquent purchaser list, then the entire unit must provide payment upon delivery. The unit must also purchase bingo equipment and supplies on a payment upon delivery basis. To obtain a copy of a filed quarterly report, the information can be accessed via the BSP. An organization can select the Organization Information tab and units can select the Unit Organization Information tab. The statewide public reports are available through the link on the Bingo website or through the BSP. It takes the viewer to a list of available Bingo reports. Each report can then be tailored by the viewer by specific search criteria. Ensure that the browser allows pop-ups or some content may not launch or be visible. This completes Module 4, Accounting.